What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to FNAF Theory Review. Yes, I am back reviewing some of your theories and today I've got a very interesting topic to look into. Yeah, it's about time we have a bit of a deeper look into Midnight Motorist. This is a topic I think I kind of strayed away from for the better part of like five years now. And there's obviously a reason behind that. The reason is because Midnight Motorist is freaking confusing. There are so many elements to this minigame and these elements, they don't connect. It seems to obviously be pointing towards William Afton being the orange guy, but then you look deeper and it doesn't seem like that's the case. It seems like it's Maybe one of the fathers of the missing children's incident, or maybe it's Henry. But then you look deeper into that, and then you think to yourself, well then, that must mean that all of these clues pointing towards William are red herrings. So what's the point of any of this? And to be honest, I've seen a lot of different theories circling Midnight Motorists. I've seen a lot of different ideas float around the internet, and none of them have been that's satisfying. Obviously, Scott had a story to tell when he was making Pizzeria Simulator, which is where Midnight Motorist came in, but I don't know what he was trying to tell with Midnight Motorist specifically, and that is what we're going to be diving deep into today. I'm going to be looking at two YouTube theories today by pretty small YouTubers, very recent videos actually that have been suggested to me, and I want to react to them not only because I want to see different people's perspectives and different people's ideas, but also because I want to support those smaller creators and I want to give them more of an audience, I guess. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to really boost it that much, but... I guess the more people that see it, the better, right? Especially if the theories are good, especially if the video editing is good. But either way, Let's get straight into them. I also do want to mention that I am going to be reacting to the dual process theory theory, and that is coming down the pipeline sometime this week. So make sure you keep your eyes out for that one. It is, of course, a two hour video, so the reaction is going to be a bit more than two hours, but we, uh, we don't care about that. It's fine. Now, this first video is called A New Take on Midnight Motorist, and it's by It's Jessica. Uh, this was actually suggested by someone on my Discord, Yankee, a good friend. Not my video, but I had to share. This is one of the most satisfying answers I've seen for Midnight Motorist. I am really excited to get into this. I have no idea what they're going to say, but I am very intrigued. Nevertheless, let's get straight into it. Midnight Motorist is the most confusing game in FNAF history. Absolutely. There's no debate to even be had about that. <laughs> and for a while, people thought they had come up with the best theory. The idea that Mustard Man and William Afton I love were the editing one and the already. same was basically accepted as fact by a lot of people. And even I bought into it. But now, I think that I've come up with a better solution. So, okay. to give you a full idea of the original theory, I'll quickly run it back for you. I'm sure you don't need a full breakdown of the minigame by now because its gameplay has been discussed to death so we'll Absolutely. skip to the part in the house <laughs> the theory claims that this is the Afton house and that you play as a drunken William Afton yeah. coming home to tell off his son after killing Charlie Emily in a drunken rage. So I'm pretty sure they're gonna go over this right but very convincing, right, that this is William Afton. Not only is it raining, so it, it kind of implies that it's taking place later that night, which is what the minigame is also called, to the Charlotte incident, which is also raining in. He's driving a purple car, right? And, and there is this guy sitting in front of the TV that is presumed to be Michael. But then you look into it and there's a lot of different issues surrounding everything else, right? Like, who is the other person that's run off to that place again? Why are there these strange footprints in the ground? Like, there, there's a lot of different elements that don't seem to have an answer, right? And that's, that's, that's the hard part of all of this. Um, it seems, with the footprints at least, that like, maybe this was William kidnapping a kid because the, the number of toes matches Otherwise, it's like Golden Freddy, maybe it's Shadow Freddy. That's where it gets a little bit weird. 
ties in with You're the Band a little bit. It, it, it's just very confusing because there's a lot of different things going on, as I've been saying. Let's see what they have to say about it. The drunken rage and the son that he's coming home to be even more abusive to as crying child. When he walks in, Michael Afton is watching TV and tells it him It does make sense though because he is abusive child, as well. But William doesn't take that advice on board and when Cece's door is locked, he goes around the house from outside only to find out that Cece has broken his window and escaped. There yeah. are obviously more aspects to this but those are the basics. It was quite convincing with every detail taken into account, but yeah, yeah. some things didn't sit right with me. For one, why would a crying mess of a child take the risk of disobeying his clearly abusive father just to run away to a restaurant that he likes? If he's so terrified of the animatronics and there is proof of one of the Springlock suits being outside his window, then how would he be able to bring himself to run past it when he has shown That's a good him point. I haven't to have a breakdown that, when he is within five feet of Fredbear? Yeah. It just makes no sense looking back on it. So let me present my alternative version okay. to you, where William Afton is involved, just not in a visible or playable capacity. Let me make one thing clear from the off. This house is not the Afton house. No, I, think I don't we think can it is. That. I believe that the house we see depicted as the Afton house in the FNAF 4 minigames is canonically how it looks. Okay, I, I, I do agree with that. I do agree with that to an extent. Um, I think, yeah, we've, we've seen... So I, I made a, a video on the story Dittophobia, which is the last story in Tales from the Pizzaplex, and it's very interesting because it has a lot of FNAF 4 connections as well as sister location connections. And if you haven't seen that video, go and watch it, it's really good. <laughs> One of my best uploads, I think. And in that story, we learn that, you know, these the, the FNAF 4 bedroom is a testing facility. The plush trap hallway is a testing facility in sister location's location. But then you also have like another area in the top left of the map in sister location, which is kind of grayed out, which perfectly reflects this map of, of the crying child's house, basically. And that's really weird to me because like, why would there be like a testing facility of the crying child's house in in the sister location location and that to me kind of kind of says to me that that this is fake this house is fake it's hard to know because like what actually is afton's house like where is afton's house all of the different um interpretations of afton's house look very very different they have completely different layouts midnight motorists house looks nothing like this FNAF 4 house. So like, what's going on? It leads onto a street. The windows look onto the sidewalk. That directly contradicts the house in Midnight Motorways, yeah, exactly. which is surrounded I, I, by I'm forest. gonna repeat something. And that leads but... me to believe that they're completely different houses. Focusing on the map yeah. for a second, I want to take a look at the footprints next to okay. the smashed window. These big Three footprints, toes. I'm convinced, belong to Spring Bonnie. More yeah. specifically, William Afton inside of the Spring Bonnie suit. He convinced Most the child inside the house to follow him back to the pizzeria with the promise of a birthday party. Oh, but I hear you calling this fairy dead on arrival because of the fact it's raining, but the final name is later that night. It's clearly implied that Mustard Man has been gone for a bit of time, giving William a decent window to snatch the child. Okay. The weather works okay. in mysterious I'll, ways I'll and living in Scotland, I know how quickly rain can come out of nowhere. I think that the file name <laughs> so do I. That this kidnapping was done much earlier in the evening and we're seeing the aftermath and the father's initial reaction. Some people that buy into this theory I'm presenting believe that the victim is one of the missing children from the original MCI. Okay. Okay, I, I'm liking where this is going, and you are you are posing a very good argument here, right? And I completely agree with you. I think something about Minai Motorists that a lot of us seem to kind of have in the back of our heads, but like we don't bring it forward that often, is that nothing actually happens in Minai Motorist. Have you thought about that? Nothing happens in Minai Motorist at all. What we're seeing in Midnight Motorist is the aftermath of something that's happened. And sure, you can you can pin that on, on Charlotte Emily's death 100 percent That's fine. Like I I I agree there are connections. 
especially because of the rain, especially because of the purple car that Afton is driving away in. But, 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 what if later that night actually referred to something else and it referred to an incident that happened earlier that night and now we're seeing the aftermath of it? What if that is the key to this minigame? As I say, nothing happens in Midnight Motorist. Nothing. We are seeing the aftermath of something and it's really hard to piece together what what happened? We need we need like a crime scene investigator to go, to like get the little pieces of evidence and like backtrack and and see what actually happened in order to get to this place. But nothing happens in Midnight Motorist, and that's something that I always kind of look look past. Right? It's something that again is just in the back of your brain, but you don't really bring it forward that often. So that's very interesting. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure I believe that because as far as we're aware those kids were all taken at Freddy's so I think this yeah, is just think it can be the missing children go to in order to get kids for his experiments whether that be I think it's or probably otherwise. Andrew That's I think what, what I think. adds to this being a showcase of his depravity rather than another MCI recreation is because of the fact that the spring body suit Dysophobia. is hinted to have been outside knowing that it functions through spring locks that is incredibly dangerous because of the chance of sudden rain and Wilgum has to have known that. I think that this actually yeah, adds credit true. to my point about the weather as I think the fact it's raining later that night is meant to tell us how close Wilgum came to being springlocked just to get another child for his sick plan. And on the final text of the like night game when Mustard Man says that he has off to that place again, that indicates how much his son loved Freddy's. If he loved it as much as it seems, if he saw one of his favourite characters outside of his window this is edited with promises so of well. cake and a party, then of course he wouldn't be able to resist. And Afton would have recognised this and seen him as the best potential victim. So let's next focus on our playable yeah. character yeah. for a second so we can build up a story. Mustard okay. Man is clearly an alcoholic. Driving against oncoming traffic 100%. is probably a sign Junior's of that, but if you need more evidence, not the fact he gets turned away from Junior's alcoholic. should be enough. Some people think that Junior's is another mm. Freddy's restaurant, but I disagree. I think Junior's is a bar, as some people theorise, and that its inclusion is to hammer home this alcoholic fact. I I really do agree with that. I, I agree with that entirely. Um, I think if it was supposed to be a Freddy's location, it would be more clear, right? I, I, I don't think Scott would hide that, right? Why, what, for what reason would Scott not put Freddy's and instead put Junior's, which is actually Freddy's, but doesn't have anything to do with Freddy? Like, like it, it's kind of weird. I do definitely feel like the kind of aesthetic of the building, I, I know it's like freaking 10 pixels or something, but like, the aesthetic of the building looks very sort of 1980s, 1990s bar kind of type, right? I think that the design of this is actually perfect and it's it's doing what it's supposed to do, I think, which is, which is tell us that this is a bar that is open late at night. I mean, that's also the thing, right? That, that's, oh my gosh, I've just solved Midnight Motorist. This takes place at midnight. Why wouldn't this be a bar? <laughs> wait, wait, why has nobody ever thought of that? Yeah, this takes place at midnight. This has to be a bar, right? If it's, if it's open, the door's clearly open. Green guy is still here. There are cars outside of Junior's. There are people inside the building. Wow, I, I am basically a detective on this. We might solve Midnight Motorist today. Wow. I'm kidding, by the way. Like, like that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool theorizing right there. But it's it's not solving anything. Um, anyway, I think Junius is a bar. I think it, I think that's what Scott intended um, entirely. I don't think it's a Freddy's because I think it would be more clear that it's a Freddy's. I I don't I don't see why Scott would conceal that. Considering there are other cars in the parking lot, it's very clear that he is being turned away. Only him, not everyone. While he's clearly not a great father, the alcohol won't help, and the fact he's willing to walk around his house in the rain just to get to his son's window is a massive indication of how messed up his mind is. Whether that's the alcohol or just his general personality is up for debate. Absolutely. But the fact that you aren't allowed to walk away from the son's door because he can't talk to you like that indicates 
indicates that Mustard Man's mind is skewed in the moment, potentially from being under the influence of alcohol. Focusing on the sun, I think that he used Freddy's as an escape from his home life, with an abusive father okay. and another family member who seemingly couldn't care enough to properly help out. Okay, okay, I'm liking where this is going. Because it, it, it connects to Dithophobia again. Uh, Dithophobia. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to do a full summary. I'm just going to say something that ties in here. And this is something that I talked about in my Dithophobia video very briefly. Although it was only brief because there's not much going for it. But the more I think about it, the more it kind of makes sense, right? This doesn't necessarily have to be where Rory was taken. And Rory was the kid in the FNAF 4 experiments for over 10 years, right? Here's the thing. Parallels. <laughs> I know FNAF theorists hate the word parallels, but parallels do exist. Whether, whether, you, whether you believe that the books are in the same universe or not, parallels exist. And one big parallel I can see is that this kid who was in the FNAF 4 experiments almost had the chance to escape those experiment rooms multiple times, countless times. That is why it's called dytophobia. It's fear of repetition. It's being repeated. It's on a loop all the time, constantly. He could have escaped at any time, but he chose not to. Why did he choose not to escape those experiment rooms? Because life was so much better in those rooms than it was outside. He had no friends. He had abusive parents. He had freaking nothing. So here's, <laughs> here's where the Midnight Motorist comes in, right? You have clearly an abusive father, clearly a negligent or negligent, neglectful, neglectful parent or brother or whatever, and a neglectful family member who is just sat watching TV. And you have this kid who has clearly smashed out the window, gone with someone. Like, this is very clearly leading up to like, this is, this is an incident. This is William kidnapping someone. I really, really, really feel like that is the case. And if we also look at the rest of Pizzeria Simulator as a whole, what is it trying to tell us? There are multiple different things going on. The puppet minigame is showing Charlie's kidnapping. The molten, um, not the molten, the, uh, <laughs> the fruity maze minigame is showing us a kidnapping of the missing children's incident. What is this showing us? This is showing us yet again another kidnapping or another killing, but of another character. Which character? For me, probably it's going to be Andrew because Andrew is the most vengeful spirit in the entire series. And that would then be carried forward into Ultimate Custom Night. So I really feel like FNAF 6 as a whole is just showing us all of the children's kidnappings, etc. And this is the most vengeful. And that is why Midnight Motorist is so confusing because we haven't seen anything really about this vengeful child. And yeah, I, I think that's why Midnight Motorist kind of feels like it's standalone because it is about this child that we've never really seen or heard much of before, but is very clearly vengeful and very clearly important to the story. Let's carry on. Let's finish this video. A restaurant filled with lovable characters would be the perfect place for a child to escape. And I mean that in a literal sense too, because it's outright stated that this isn't the first time he's run off. When we discover the footprints, we get this quote from Mustard Man, and so this doesn't again. come as a surprise yes. to him. The fact he's done this before could be another reason why William may have targeted him, because he knows the father wouldn't immediately report the disappearance, and also that the child would well follow. Although I'm confident now that Midnight Motorist isn't about Afton, there are still some things that stand out. 
the main thing being the question of what is a mound of dirt? I can't answer that because I, I don't think it's a victim that I don't even have an away. I think that if he was luring him for remnant, then he wouldn't have hastily killed it and buried him nearby the and ones. so quickly. If you have any theories maybe. on what you think the mound could be relating to this theory, then please do let me know. Together Same we can thing. maybe figure let it out and come to a conclusion. Below. The purple car is what makes a lot of people think that Mustard Man is William, and to that I have a bit of an outrageous theory that I want to point out. Just because <gasps> Oh, no. some of you may like it and who knows it could turn out to be true although I doubt this one. <laughs> oh, in the no. FNAF 1 newspaper clippings it says that a suspect was convicted for the MCI. Ooh. Convicted not charged. That implies Ooh. that he was actually put in prison for his crimes. Mustard Man drives a purple car, has history of abuse, is an alcoholic and has relation to Freddy's for his son and his son's disappearance. So let me present this timeline of events. Mustard Man drives home one night drunk out of his mind. His son's window is smashed and he assumes that he has run off to Freddy's. We okay. see a free-toed footprint indicating that William may have been the one in the area stalking Definitely. Mustard Man's son and luring him That's away to Freddy's most, to kill to him. And soon enough, the disappearance of his son is made aware to the police. They can't find the body, but they're made aware of the abuse allegations against Mustard Man and see him as suspect number one due to the alcohol abuse. Eventually, they have to let him go as they don't have enough evidence that he actually killed his son, but the public opinion is that he finally snapped. But that's not the I truth. That Mustard Man is devastated really cool. over the loss of his son and drinks the days away, bottle after bottle of beer. And then the MCI happens. William strikes again. And this time, the police know that someone in a purple car committed the crime. They put the pieces together and link their number one suspect from the last case, Mustard Man, to the MCI, okay. with the car being the final missing puzzle piece. Now, this is a stretch, I'm very aware of that, but I thought some of you might like it. I've seen a lot of people trying to explain the purple car as a coincidence, so I thought I'd try and find a logical explanation, even if it is a bit out there. And police linking Afton's purple car to Mustard Man would make sense, as in the FNAF 1 clippings, it doesn't say how they identified the suspect through video surveillance footage, only that they had used it to Wait. help. So it doesn't have to be a face that they found on the video, but maybe something as simple as a vehicle. Thank you so much for watching, let me know if you found any of this video in interesting and subscribe it would mean the world to I me. found it very and interesting you could be my 100th subscriber if you're watching this at the right time but anyways I'll see you next time okay that was a very good video I really enjoyed that I if anything I wish it was longer to be honest <laughs> I really enjoyed it but it didn't need to be longer really it was very concise very well put together very well animated and edited I really like it here's my real thoughts right I think, I, I, I have no idea what the mound is, by the way. I think the mound to me, like I, I, I can see puzzle pieces for everything else, all of the other elements in the story, like drunken from juniors, uh, child has ran off to that place again. There is a negligent mother or whatever that person is, whoever that person is. I can see lots of different elements and I can see them all adding up in some way. We just need to kind of put the pieces together. The thing that I don't see adding up at all is that mound. It makes zero sense. It is three pixels of awfulness and I just don't really want to have to deal with it. I kind of don't even think about it anymore because I just, I'm just trying to get it out of my head. But something with this video actually really resonated with me. And it is, it is that theory that number one suspect, that's very interesting. And the reason I say that is because it's almost like we almost fell for it as well, right? It's, it's almost like we're put into this universe, we're playing an arcade game in universe as well. And the thing is, we all thought this was William, but it's not. And maybe that's what happened in universe as well. Maybe all of these William Afton red herrings were intentionally put in this mini game to say, hey, this looks like William Afton, but it's not. Because this was the guy who was convicted for some of William Afton's kidnapping and murders. That 
is super interesting and I really like that conclusion actually that that fits it fits really well and and the thing is it fits well but the thing I don't like about it is that there's not enough there's not enough evidence for it <laughs> like I, I feel like this this could very well be the case and I feel like it's a very very cool conclusion that could definitely be true I just don't see enough pieces in place for it and and like it, it's that thing where like there's not enough going for it but there's also not enough going against it so like there's this kind of gray area in the middle that like yeah it's 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 a great theory it, it just doesn't have enough support and if we can find more support freaking fantastic right but unfortunately it, it it's kind of just like we've made our own story. And that is unfortunate because I really like the conclusion and I, I think that it could be true. I think that it could be true. Um, and could it be something that William Afton, not William Afton, Scott Cawthon, <laughs> they are not one and the same. Could it be something that Scott Cawthon planned? I, I believe so, I think so. And it makes it even better if, if this father was a father of a victim of William Afton and he was the one that was charged. It's hard, it's really hard to put this together, but it, it does make sense. The purple car, the alcoholism, it, it, it just kind of, it adds up. So thank you so much to It's Jessica for that video. Thank you to Yankee for suggesting it. I think that was really insightful actually. And I think I, think I might have to make my own video on my Midnight Motorist at this point. Let me know if you would like that. Now, this other video that I am going to be reacting to now is by Withered Circle. It came out less than two weeks ago and it's called Midnight Motorist is not about the Aftons. What a surprise. More people talking about this. I am going to laugh quite a bit if this is the same conclusion as that first video, but I really hope it's not because I really want to see another interpretation and see if I can debunk it or if I can add any ideas to it. Let's just see what's going on. Withered Circle, take it away, lad. Although Fagnetted Freddy's is full lad. of all kinds oh, of God. weird details and many subjects up for debate, one that keeps pulling a William Afton and always coming back is the <laughs> Midnight Motorist minigame from okay. FNAF 6. Many different fans and theorists have proposed lots of possibilities for the true story behind this cryptic minigame, but today I want to step in and present what I believe could be the true story of Midnight Motorist. As Take well it as away. this minigame is not about William Afton and Love his family, this editing. as well as some crazy new theories on the minigame I found, <laughs> including an insane one I made on how the big bad of the story is hiding right in plain sight. Okay. So step in, because today... I'll be solving Midnight Motorist. Fantastic Midnight intro. Midnight is a minigame from Freddy Amazing. Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator and one of three secret minigames that the player can find by playtesting different attractions in their pizzeria. Yeah. Namely Fruity Maze, the Security Puppet, and of course, the Midnight Motorist Arcade. The three minigames I've pointed Motorist out as well. The Midnight Motorist gameplay is pretty simple, as it's basically just you racing through a highway avoiding oncoming cars. The secret part of the minigame, however, is way more interesting. On the fourth lap, if you stick to the bottom of the screen, you'll see a hole that your car can fit into, which will take you into the true Midnight Motorist minigame Maybe I should have watched this later one first. that night in the code. <laughs> I won't recap okay. all the events I like of the, the minigame recap. in detail, as I'm sure you know what I'm talking about if you clicked on this video, but suffice it to say that the identity of the three human characters were introduced to in the minigame, the player, who I'll call Mustard Man, the couch person, and the runaway, are very heavily debated in the fierce community, and it eventually yeah. falls down to two camps. The one that states Midnight Motorist is about William Afton and his family, and the one that says it isn't. And although I used to believe that Mustard Man was actually William, I don't think so anymore. In fact, I believe I Midnight Motorist it. is all about a completely I different family. I believe every theory under the sun So let's go point. into the evidence for both <laughs> sides. The theory that Midnight Motorist is about the Afton family is much more popular and has many more believers, including yeah, big actually. theorists in the FNAF theory YouTube community. Yeah. But it's actually pretty funny because none of them seem to agree on which members of the Afton family are actually being shown here. True. Almost of these theorists think must be lots of different William Afton, the identities of the couch person and runaway are debated, with some people stating that the couch person is Michael Afton and is the runaway's crying child, and others believing the runaway to be Michael and the couch person to be Mrs. Afton. It's also stated that the Junior's bar we see earlier in the game is a rebranded Freddy's location. The point is, the Afton side of the debate is pretty <laughs> complex, but if I have to pick one of these options, it's that Michael is the runaway. However, I don't think the player really? character of Midnight I, I Motorist is William Afton, and neither is Junior's a rebranded Freddy's. 
In fact, I think there's another much more likely option, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me explain why I don't think William is the player character of Midnight Motorist. Okay. First off, the most obvious thing is the color of our character. He's yellowish orange and not purple. The most probable yeah. reason for yeah. him not being purple is that a purple character would be literally invisible against the minigame's background. A lot of people say that he's true, yellow actually. because it's on true. the opposite side of the color spectrum to purple. And while that's true, if you invert Mustard Man's sprite, he becomes blue. I did hear about this, actually. I don't know where... I got this from, but that that is very true. If you invert the actual color of Mustard Man, he becomes Blue Man, <laughs> another color. I think I, I'm sorry to go back to the first theory, but I, I think something that kind of struck a chord with me again here is that, yes, this guy is driving a purple car, which initially makes us think it's William Afton. But as soon as he gets out, what does every YouTuber say? Wait. Orange guy? <laughs> like, we, we all expect purple car, brain, we all expect the person to get out of it to be the purple guy. We all expect it to be about William Afton. But as soon as he gets out and it's orange guy, that to me tells me that this is a completely different character. And yeah, maybe all of these red herrings is because this is, this is the guy who was convicted. Let's carry on with this video. I want to see where this conclusion is going to take us. Not purple. One of the biggest pieces of evidence people use for the William MM theory is that the name of the minigame in the code is later that night. And just by the rainy background, it felt like this was implying the minigame happened right after the death of Charlotte Emily. However, there's actually a the major same issue with this theory. Well, Going off of the take cake to the children and security puppet minigames, Charlie's death almost definitely happened at a Fredbear's location because of the different yep. Freddy sprite and smaller location, Agreed. as well as an animatronic we never saw in the Freddy's location before, namely the security puppet. And before you use the excuse that Fredbear didn't even exist during FNAF 2, it did. Phone guy literally brings it up on the last night. Yeah, we're gonna try to contact the original restaurant owner. Yes. Uh, I think the name of the place was Fredbear's Family Diner or something like that. And since William's but house is literally Fred right Bears next to Fredbear's in FNAF 4, he FNAF would need location. to drive all the way back from there to get home after killing Charlie. After all, the player character is literally using a car to get from place to place. As well as that, the stuff Mustard Man says upon seeing that his own son was kidnapped is really strange. He says that he ran off to that place again, the place most likely being Freddy's, judging by the animatronic footprints right next to the window. Mm -hmm. But since William is quite literally the guy who made Freddy's, he wouldn't call it that place, but rather Freddy's or Freddy Fazbear's or something like that. Since we're on the subject of William's home, yeah, it's completely I different to the FNAF War house. Actually, yeah. No, no, no. You are onto something. That is a very good point. Ran off to that place again. Once again, we have the same thing as Junior's, right? If Junior's was actually a Freddy's location, I think Scott Cawthon would have said, would, would have put Junior's, uh, sorry, would have put Freddy's instead. Or he would have put like a Freddy cutout in, in the front of it. Like he would have put something to say it's Freddy's. He wouldn't just th randomly throw this new location called Junior's if it was actually Freddy's. Here's the thing about that line, ran off to that place again. Yes, absolutely. Think about it. If this was actually William, he wouldn't be saying ran off to that place again. He would be saying ran off to Freddy's again. Freddy's is his. He wouldn't be saying, oh, ran off to that place again. Because like, he, he doesn't dislike Freddy's. Well, we don't really know how he feels about Freddy's, but like, it's it's his place. He wouldn't be saying that place. Like, it's, it sounds kind of like, like it's a drag to say, right? Like, like he, he despises that place. I don't think he would be talking about Freddy's there. Um, or no, 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 sorry. I don't think it would be William talking about Freddy's there. I think it would be some other guy who despises Freddy's talking about that place. Oh, ran off to that place again. I don't know how many more times I need to say it, but you kind of get my point. I think that's a very good point. I think I, that's, again, something that I completely looked over and a very good piece of evidence to, um, to support whatever you're about to say. <laughs> There's only three rooms, the windows on the outside are different, and most glaringly important of all, it's now in the middle of the woods, not yeah. the busy populated yeah. neighborhood. Unless Fastbird Entertainment bulldozed all the houses and kids around the area, this doesn't really make sense. 
making the Midnight Murderer's house look like the FNAF 4 one wouldn't have been hard at all. So I think this was a deliberate choice by Scott. Yeah, Some yeah. people have said that Junior's yeah. is actually Fredbear's, but I'm regardless more of where this is what it looks like before or after its closing, why wouldn't William be allowed in? The argument that he drank too much and that Junior's is a bar makes sense, but the Green Man explicitly says he's just not allowed there, not anything else. This establishment is explicitly banning Mustard Man. Plus, there's not too much proof it's a bar, leaving the identity of the establishment up to debate. Eh, In the yeah. minigame, there's also an unmarked pile of dirt that can be found on the way down the road. And while many theorists say this could be anything from the crying child's corpse to the sister location bunker, Mustard Man doesn't react at all to the pile of dirt. There's no free dots, no dialogue, no change in mood, it's just a pile of dirt. True. But I think this is actually immensely important, and I'll bring okay, it soon. Okay, I would love the to hear about car the being purple likely means nothing. All the other cars in the first section of the game are purple, and there's a random purple car in FNAF 4, and Jessica from the books owns a purple car too. <laughs> the rest of the FNAF 6 mini games are also about some of Afton's victims, Susie and Charlie. So why should this yeah, one Yeah, exactly! Different? Exactly! The discussion around the TV person is interesting, but since we never see Mrs. Afton in the games or even books, I'm not too strong on that aspect of the hypothesis. I don't think Mike would protect the crying child in the mature way that the TV person does since his whole character is all about Yeah, the actually, the yeah, yeah. So both possibilities for the TV person's identity under the Afton MM theory feel strange to me. The runaway, however, is where this gets pretty interesting. So let's talk about the other possibilities for the identity of Mustard Man and the overarching story of Midnight this. Motorist. The first, and arguably most popular alternate theory for the true identity of the Midnight Motorist Runaway is labeled the Andrew oh. MM Theory, and just by the name, I'm guessing you know what this one's about. The infamously controversial character that got me noticed by Twitter, Andrew uh, Fnaf. Andrew Fnaf. The theory admittedly has some standing. In the Fabric <laughs> Fights books, Andrew says he hasn't had a friend in a long time, implying that he had a friend once, and Spring Bonnie is infamous for tricking kids into a sense of false security and pretending to be their friend or yeah. help them meaning Andrew could have thought Bonnie was friendly and gone with him. Apart from some minor implications throughout the rest of the Stitch Race Stingers, that's sort of where the evidence ends as far as I'm aware. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I would say so. I think um, I think it's just the fact that he's vengeful, right? I think... Uh, I don't know, it, it's really difficult. I feel like this, this kidnapping, if it is a kidnapping, is different to the others. And I think it's probably because the kid that was kidnapped was probably used in the experiment rooms in FNAF 4. Complete speculation, don't have anything really to back that up. But like, it kind of makes sense from a story perspective, like where, where was he getting these children? He was kidnapping them from places. Where? <laughs> where was he kidnapping them from? Well, Midnight Motorist can probably show us one of those victims, right? And I, I think that Andrew Midnight Motorist does actually make a lot of sense. Um, just from like a, a completion principle kind of standpoint. It also means, in a way, we have seven victims in FNAF. We have Gabriel, Jeremy, Susie, Fritz, Cassidy, um, and the other two. I mean, okay, those five were the missing children, Susie and the Fruity Maze minigame. That's one arcade assigned to one kind of incident. And then we have the puppet. Uh, Charlotte Emily, which is the puppet minigame, the security puppet minigame, take cake to the children minigame. <sighs> That's another minigame assigned to uh, another children's incident. And then we have Minai Motorist, which is another minigame that has to be assigned to another children's incident. Who's it going to be? It's going to be the seventh victim, one that we haven't heard that much of, just like in the Toy Chica high school Cutscenes, there is another, that there's like the Foxy hook that we never see Foxy. Um, I'm blabbering on so much, by the way, I'm so sorry. But the seventh victim has to be Minai Motorist. I, I really feel like that is the case right now. And I think going into this video, right, or, or kind of starting recording this video, my brain was at Andrew Minai Motorist. I know I didn't really talk about what my opinion was going into this video, but that was kind of what I was thinking. And now I'm starting to think of the suspect thing more because I really, really liked It's Jessica's um, uh, opinions on that. But yeah, I, I, I agree. Andrew Minar Motorist does also make quite a bit of sense. So maybe a cross between the two. <laughs>
But if there's anything about Andrew MM I missed, let me know in the comments and leave a like and subscribe while you're Anyway, there's a much I love more convincing the editing, second so theory funny. It has really grown on me recently, and that is the Gabriel MM theory. For those of you who don't know, oh. Gabriel is an MCI victim and most likely the one that goes into Freddy Five Bear himself. I haven't the heard this. The main reason one. why he's a good candidate for the role of the runaway is because of FNAF Help Wanted's final minigame, Pizza Party. In the game, you're lured out of your house by Glitchtrap and eventually end up in a Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, getting stuffed into the Freddy animatronic as Glitchtrap looks on. The yeah, newspaper yeah. clippings never specify that the MCI kids were all taken from Freddy's, just that they went missing there, so William could have easily gone to get a kid from a random person's house. But this I is guess. where it gets insane. That's a bit of a you stretch. See, at to the me. beginning of the video, I said that the big bad of Midnight Motorist was actually hidden in plain sight all along. Okay. And I didn't mean Mustard Man. Because oh. the green guy we see outside Juniors could just be none other than William Afton. Remember how I brought up that if we color invert Mustard Man, he becomes blue? Well, I found out that if you do the same thing to green guy, oh! he turns into a very familiar shade of pinkish oh! purple. The wall of Juniors also becomes a light blue of a shade pretty similar to the wall of Fredbear's in FNAF 4. So what does this mean? Well, first off, the green guy is the only character close no. enough to Mustard Man's house to easily kidnap a kid. If Juniors is a separate Fredbear's location, even if it isn't Owen or the one in FNAF 4, he could have easy access to a Spring Bonnie suit by working at the location as a bouncer. Pink undercover boss, kind of like what he did in FNAF 2, meaning he could kidnap a kid and easily get away with it. That's... So interesting. Okay, my thoughts, my immediate thoughts before we continue with this. That has kind of blown me away, right? <laughs> I love this, this is so funny. Okay, so everybody initially thought that the mustard man, orange guy, was the opposite of purple guy, right? And because they're inverted, it must mean they're the same character right? Potentially. Um, and then we've just seen earlier in, on in this video that that's not the case because orange guy is actually blue guy on, on the flip side. However, oh, flip side. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry. However, green guy, you invert the color, you get purple. And it's like, a, it's very, it's a very clear purple. Like it's, it's very clear. Nobody ever really questioned why green guy is green. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> but like that, that, that does make sense in in some in some weird way that makes sense. I don't know about the narrative of it, but that has kind of blown me away. That's so funny. This is making me question everything. But yeah, I I I, I like that. That's that's really cool evidence for your theory. Um, I don't really agree yet with Gabriel Midnight Motorist. I, I think that's very much a stretch. And I think that's very much a stretch because it's kind of over overcomplicating some of the law. I think it's a lot easier to say that Gabriel went missing in the back rooms of Freddy's uh, and, he, and he wasn't kidnapped from a house. He, like, he, he went to Freddy's one day and then booyah, He's gone missing. Um, just like we've seen in, in kind of all the pieces of media of FNAF, um, Into the Pit comes to mind, of course. I mean, I know there's a lot of differences there with like missing children's incident, but um, I, like nobody was like dragged into Freddy's um, forcefully or like lured from their freaking house or something like, I, I feel like that's probably overcomplicating it if you're saying that the runaway kid is Gabriel. But, I don't know, let's see what else you got. Explaining the footprints outside the player's house. Whether this kid could be Gabriel or not is unclear, since that would make it a bit weird for William to go all the way to Freddy's from said location with some Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. But then yeah. again, it's likely Fredbear's and Freddy's aren't too far away from each other and are both in Hurricane Utah, since the novels show they're pretty close by. Maybe William did what he did with Garrett in the FNAF movie and drove Utah's away with pretty Gabriel. Big, I think, right? If the kid isn't Gabriel, but rather an anomalous victim like Andrew or someone else entirely, it's possible Green Guy, aka William, killed the runaway and buried him next to Juniors, explaining the amount of dirt in the clearing. After all, William seems to have a thing for hiding corpses in or right next to the place of the crime. There's also another interesting Midnight Motorist theory that says the runaway is actually a nightmare experiment victim like Rory from the Tale story Didophobia. Okay, wait, 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 wait. 
that's that's great. I, I love how we're getting into dysphobia. I I'm just a bit confused, right? What 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 would be the purpose if if the mound was in fact the runaway kid, just kind of dead or like a grave? First of all, orange guy doesn't say anything about it, right? He could have said, "Wait, that's my kid." Like, like, he, he could have said something about the mound. Maybe the mound is just completely unimportant. Maybe it's a complete red herring. Like, what, what is that mound? I have absolutely no idea. However, if it was the runaway kid, wouldn't that be a bit pointless, right? Wouldn't that mean that that would, like, invalidate the entire point of Midnight Motorist as a minigame? Like, what would Midnight Motorist be showing at that point? It wouldn't be showing anything. It'd be showing this story of... This, this drunken dad who's come home, um, tried to abuse his kid, and then found out that the kid has run off and has, has died uh, to the hands of William Afton. Like, what, what does that do for us? That, that doesn't help with any law, and it doesn't really tell the story of any characters that we then see later on in the future of the series. So I'm, I'm a bit confused why, well, like, what, what is the rationale behind that mound being... A dead kid. I'm not too sure, but continuing. Rory also ran away from home, so maybe Afton was kidnapping multiple different kids to use in his bunker. Yeah. I won't go I... too in detail on the animatronic that created the footprints next to the house, since I've talked about that a lot already okay. in the past, but I like the idea of it being just spring bonnie. The only issue is the rain, which would trigger the spring locks, meaning We've the footprints would have to be pretty aged. Lastly, the name of the minigame itself, oh. later that night, could refer to the night of the MCI. The FNAF 1 newspaper clippings and the news reports from the Freddy in Space Free FNAF movie footage all confirm it took place in the later hours of Operation at Freddy's. To recap my train huh. of thought, I think that the most likely option for the true identity of the Midnight Motorist Runaway is either Andrew, if the books take place in the game's continuity, or Gabriel, if they don't. The green guy next to Junior's could be William Afton and the one who kidnapped the runaway, and the mound of dirt, either an entrance to Afton's bunker and nightmare experiments, or the corpse of one of William's victims. As I said That's at the beginning so of the video, I don't think Midnight Motorist is about the Afton family, but it does have William show up in it, in a pretty cool twist. After all, William is, indirectly, in every single FNAF 6 minigame. Thanks for watching. Ooh. Remember to leave a comment with your opinion on the theory if you enjoyed, Wait. and like and subscribe. Next week is the one year anniversary of my first ever theory oh, video, sick. which means I'll be unlisting my older theories and putting out something special for all of you to oh, enjoy. Nice. Um, that, that struck a chord with me. What, what was the last thing he said? The last thing he said, William is indirectly in all of those arcade minigames in FNAF 6. That is true. That is true. He's Spring Bonnie in fr Fruity Maze. Um, what's the other one? Oh, Security Puppet. For sure, he's... I mean, I guess indirectly, yeah. I mean, he shows up in Take Cake to the Kids. Um, so, sure. Yeah, I, I guess that's true. It... It would be a huge plot twist if Green Guy was William Afton this entire time. That would be crazy. But that's that's really cool. I really like that take. And and here's the thing. I don't think that's the correct take. I don't think it's necessarily the most true take at all. I just think it's really, really interesting that that is how someone has interpreted this minigame. Because uh, how long has FNAF 6 been out? Is it like seven years now or something like that? I don't know. It's been out a long time, but I've never heard that. I've, I've never heard that opinion before. I've never heard that theory in any kind of way. And, and I think that's really, really interesting and a really cool way to look at the minigame. Um, a cool way to build up your, your theory, right? And so I really like, this is why I like doing FNAF theory reviews, because it's really cool to see other people's interpretations of something that is so kind of, something that can be interpreted in so many different ways. And it's really cool to see all of those different interpretations and kind of pick and choose your favorite. Uh, or even if you just take elements, like, like I really like some of the elements here. I like the element that green guy could be purple guy. I really like the element in the first video where it, it could be the suspect, the guy that was convicted instead of William Afton. And I really, really like both of these interpretations and I really enjoyed both of these videos. They were edited fantastically. 
and they were just really interesting. I think especially that second one, it was structured so well. You kind of set up at the beginning, oh, maybe, maybe if you invert orange guy, you get purple guy. Nope. Later on, you come back to that and you're like, actually, have you inverted green guy? Purple guy. Okay, I think that that is it for now. If you guys have any thoughts on these Minimotorist theories or any thoughts of your own to do with Minimotorist, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you think about the mound, right? I, I think that is the biggest unsolved thing in FNAF since the series inception. Thank you guys so much for watching. Look out for my dual process theory reaction video that is going to be coming very, very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.